Hallelujah. Y'all, we made it one more Sunday morning. One more Sunday morning. Hallelujah. It's been raining, it seems like, forever. I told Pastor Love the other day, I think we're going to have to build the ark here a little bit. But how many know that God is blessing us? God is blessing us. Amen. Amen. I don't care what it looks like today. Even through our worship today, it seems like something wants to come in and hinder what God wants to do today. But I want to know how many people in the house are willing to get beside yourself to say, I can come here for nobody else other than the Lord. I came to worship Jesus. I don't care what folks said about you, what they gossiping about you, what they said about your family. Jesus has been too good to us. Matter of fact, if they want to gossip about something, they need to gossip about Jesus. Somebody ought to call Pence and tell them that Jesus is a healer. If you're going to gossip about something, gossip about our God. Somebody ought to tell confusion that he's a mind regulator. Somebody ought to tell death that he is the resurrection. If you are going gossip, gossip about my God. Lord, we thank you right now. We thank you for this time, Lord. We thank you for your people. Lord, we ask right now that you touch our minds and touch our hearts today. Lord, we bind up every spirit that would try to come in and hinder the worship, Lord, that would hinder the flow of your spirit in this place. God, right now we ask that you bring liberty into your house today, Lord. Free your people, God, to worship as you have called us to worship. Lord, let our worship come up straight to you, Lord. God, every hindrance right now be bind up in the name of Jesus and cast into a deep, dark pit today. God, we ask that you come in today and heal our minds and heal our hearts, heal our homes today, Jesus. God, whatever that you pour into us, Lord, let it overflow into the cities of Frisco today, Lord, and to Monroe County, Lord, and Alabama as a whole today, Lord. God, we thank you for what you're going to do in this hour. We ask that you bless the man of God that's going to bring the word today, Lord Jesus. God, clear his mind of everything that we're trying to stop him from saying what you gave him, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ of man, Lord, you see every need that your people come into your house with. We ask that you move everything out of the way, including our flesh today, Lord. God, and be God in our situations. In the name of Jesus Christ of man. And the people of God say amen. Clap your hands and say amen. Come on and say amen again. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on and worship the Lord with us in song.
going to go in another direction because I truly believe that God's people, we are tired. I can see it on your faces. I can see it. Multiple phone calls. Pastor, I won't be here today. I, I just need a break. I see it. I hear it. So today, I want to be coming from Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. See that today, the way it's acting up. Exodus chapter 20, verses 8 through 11. And the word of God says this Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor, do all of your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in the six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day. Hallowed it. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Something like that. Waiting on any distractions in here today. Today I want to use for a subject. Rest is power. I just want to talk to you today about resting. Resting. Yesterday, as I was Going around the house, I tend to walk into my children's bedrooms, and I walked into Jay's bedroom. She's the oldest. I said, Jay, why your room so junky? And I looked on her nightstand. She had a Chick-fil-A cup. Where she got Chick-fil-A from is not one around here. I don't know. She got a, uh, a Zaxby cup and a, a Burger King cup and a McDonald's cup and why do you have so many cups on the nightstand? And I look around and I said, baby, if you can't see the corners of your room, your room is junky. That's the rule of thumb. That's the way I was brought up. So I go to Cindy's room. That's the second oldest. I always go from the oldest to the youngest. And I look at her floor, and she has stuff all over her floor. And why your room? Now, her room is always the cleanest. Why your room so junky? She said, dad, I'm just... It, it, we just had a long weekend. I just had, I had time to clean it up. So I go to JT's room, and you know, he's the youngest, and I always has the junkiest room. And his room is clean. <laughs> so I go back to Sydney, and I go to Jay, and I say, your brother got the cleanest room. And Sydney said, Dad, all that boy do is sleep. <laughs> he sleep more than he's awake, so his room has no choice but to be clean. Put them agreements together, they make that 
that dough, they leave it and let it rest so it can rise. If you have to rest if you want to rise. When, I, when we form some concrete, we have to, once we put it together, we let it rest so it can cure and it can heal and it, it can become solid. If you want to heal, sometimes you have to learn how to rest. Even on the roads, when I go to and from Montgomery, where I go to work every day, every now and then in Greenville, they have something called a rest area, a rest stop, because sometimes I used to get tired, and every now and then I would pull into the rest area and take a 15 minute nap to continue my journey. Now, you, we're all created to rest. And yesterday, I, I knew what kind of service we were going to have today because I, I got the phone calls. We were so tired. We've been doing so much. And I got home and I immediately just crashed. Don't remember going to sleep. Matter of fact, Pastor Claus, he texted me some messages and I responded to him. Nobody remembers responding to the messages. But yesterday, I fell asleep and I woke up around 8, 9 o'clock last night and went right back to sleep. And I woke up this morning around 3 o'clock, went back to sleep, woke up at 6 o'clock. I was just so tired because we've been doing so much. And some of us won't stop until people are posting RIP on your page. Rest in peace. But I will let you know RIP shouldn't be rest in peace. This rest is power. Rest is power. Now you come here today to shout to you. You, know, you may not get on your feet. You may not shout today. I just I came to encourage somebody here today that it's time for you to take a break. It's time for you to rest. It's time for you to take a step back. And taking a step back doesn't mean that, oh, Pastor, I need to take a year off from the ministry. I need to say that. That's not taking a step back. And for some of this message ain't even for you because you're doing a lot of resting right now. You need to do something to take the load off some other folks. So if that's you, then just come in years, and I'm not telling you you need to rest. But rest is power. If you're like me, I just always had the mentality that the devil never stops, so I don't need to stop. The devil is always working. The devil is always busy. So I'm supposed to be busy. I'm supposed to always be moving. But the Lord convicted me as I was sitting in that corner today. He says, "You, who are you hearing that from? He said, the devil is always busy, but God, he rests. Who are you listening to? I, I bought this battery-operated weed eater. That's what we call in the country, weed eaters. I told somebody that I need a weed eater. They said, what's a weed eater? I mean, they call it tremors, grass tremors in the, in the city, in the store, but in the country life, we say weed eaters. I bought this expensive battery-operated weed eater, and, and, and it, it, was, it was awesome. One of my guys came to me, he said, he said, uh, the, the weed eater is smoking. I said, why is it smoking? He said, uh, after the third battery, it just starts smoking, I don't know. I said, you ran my battery-operated weed eater which I paid a lot of money for. You You went through three batteries and did not give it a rest? You just ran it? That, that, that's, that's like, for our men, you got a drill. You just hold the drill down all day long for hours. Eventually, it's going to burn out. And we are burning out. People are tired because we don't know how to stop. And that's a dangerous thing to burn out. So very quick, I just want to give you Couple things we need to do. We're going to find rest. I'm not going to be here for you long. I tell you, the Lord just gave me this while I was sitting over there. You saw me over there just typing away. I got, that's what He was giving me. He was giving me this for you today. The first thing we need to do is and understand is that if you're going to find rest, you need to walk in His promises. We always talk about you need to remember his promises. Yeah, I remember, but it doesn't do me, do me any good just to remember. I need to walk in his promises. The Lord said this. You read the text. He says, remember the Sabbath. The Sabbath means to cease. It means to rest. He tells us to keep it holy. And many times we say keep it holy 
we, we want to say, well, you got to wear your hats. You got to wear, you got this a certain look. You can't wear this. You can't wear that. There's certain places you can't go. We, we call that holiness. And to a form that is holiness to be set apart. But holiness is to emulate God himself and do what he did. And if we're going to have rest, we got to do it the way he did. We need to walk in the promises that God has given us. There's a story in Matthew chapter 8. Jesus is in the bottom of the boat. He's resting. He says he's resting on something, a pillow. I don't know if they had pillows, maybe a rock, but he was resting on it. And, 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 and the, 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 the part about this story that is crazy is that they're in a storm. That is about to break the boat. They're in a storm and it says that the ship is about to be sunken. And the disciples, they come down and they wake Jesus up and say, do you not care that we're about to die? And Jesus gets up and he says, ye of little faith. He didn't say they didn't have any faith. He just said they had little faith. In other words, he had already told them some things that were about to happen. You go to the other time they was on the ship. He said, we're going to the other side. But yet when they got in the storm, they got scared. If you're going to have peace, you have to walk in the promises of God. God told us in his word that he will always be with us. He told us that no matter what you're going through, it doesn't matter the storm that you're in right now, as long as you got me on the phone with you. At, at any moment, I have the power to get up and tell that storm, peace, be still. But not only that, you have to walk in the promises of God. You also got to get in rhythm. God is a rhythm God. It says that he worked for six days and he rested on the seventh day. There's a rhythm. That he has. He's working. And then he rests. And many of us. We just. We don't stop. I feel an example coming on. <laughs> come here brother. I don't know if you want this. I just came on. <laughs> I asked him how many push-ups can he do. I'm not hearing from God. You can't hear from God because you're too tired. Yeah. 
come on, come on, six more. Come on. You got it. You got it. I'm with you. I'm in the boat with you. Three, four, five, six rest. Come on. That's what God made for us to do. Come on. I told you that we were all. If you talk, if you don't take a break, you will eventually break. My farmer, Deacon Andrews, right there, he would tell you that if you continue to farm the same dirt over and over, the same crop, it will lose its power, it loses its nutrients to produce. And I said that to say this that. We're all dirt. If we keep using up ourselves, we would lose the power to produce. But I want to leave you with this last thing, the third thing, the final thing. If you're going to rest, you got to stop resisting the rest. Come on now. Come on now. When you resist the rest, Somebody of authority is trying to overtake you to get you to go somewhere. But yet you're trying to fight them. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. You're not going to take me. And when God is trying to take you somewhere, and you resist the rest. You don't have any peace. Matthew chapter 11, he tells us, he says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. He said, I'll give you rest. Then he says this, which blessed me all the, every time I read. He says, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Many of us, we are yoked to the wrong things. We're carrying burdens that we're never meant to carry. But he said, if you take it upon me, you're yoked to me. Y'all know we a Bible teaching church. I've told you what it means to be yoked. They used to take two cattle, two oxen. They would have an experienced ox, an innocent, a young, inexperienced ox. They would put wooden yokes around the neck. They were yoked together. And when the, when they, as they pulled the heavy load, that, that inexperienced ox would eventually get tired. But there was a stronger ox right beside them that would carry the weight with them. He said, we got this, we're in this together. And when you're yoked together with Jesus Christ our Savior, when the road gets hard, when the burdens get heavy, he says, I got you. Rest is power. Get in rhythm with him. Walk in his promises. And stop resisting the rest and do what he's telling you to do. And you'll get your praise back. I leave you with this last story about a little boy who went to the zoo with his father. When he got to the zoo, he saw this man go into a cage with these animals, some monkeys. And the little boy, he asked his dad, he said, Dad, why are the monkeys going crazy after that man walked in the cage with them? The dad looked at him and said, son, they go crazy for him because he feeds them. My God, my God. Come on now. They, they go crazy because he takes care of them. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. They have their own way of praising them. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because he's there for them. Everything yes, they need, he's there for them. And I just want to speak to that downtrodden heart today. 
Don't remember, don't forget what he's done for you. You need to be like those monkeys when the man comes in the room. You got a reason to give a glory. That's me taking care of you. That's me putting food on the table. Did he not wake you up this morning? And I don't care how you feel. So sometimes I may look crazy up here. Because he's been good to me. I'll be a fool for the Lord. Because he's brought me over some healing sometimes. And he's brought me, maybe he's brought me over some rivers. He's brought me through some good times, some bad times. Because of that, I'll give him glory. I'll give him praise. Rest. He is power. Get some rest, family. Get some rest. I'm going to help you get some rest. We've been running, we've been running, but we're going to take a break from some things. We're still going to, we're we, we going to be kingdom. We do our kingdom duties, but we're going to take a, a little break. Amen. 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 Remain standing, remain standing. I'm going to let you go very soon, very soon. It's all for giving time. We are a giving ministry. We love to pour into God's kingdom. Our screens are not up, but if you've been here any amount of time, you know how we do business. We give on our way out. You give it by cash or check. You're here for the first time. You want to give by cash at greater level one. You can go to our website. GreaterLoveFriscoCity.com and give the PayPal. We want to thank you for sowing into good ground. We had Friday Night Lights. Did you, did you ever, who came? Raise your hand if you came to Friday Night Lights. Did you not enjoy yourself? <laughs> we had a good time. We were happy. For those who came and did not say, God, let me thank God for you. We're able to do things like that for the community because of your contribution. Being kingdom minded. So we ask that you give liberally today. Father God, we thank you always for your people. We thank you for the gift. We thank you for the giver. God, I pray that you continue to allow us to be to have impact and be a force in the community and the lives that you trusted upon us. So God, we ask that you will bless it. Give it back to the people who saw it. Some 60, some 80, some 100 fold. God, I ask that you will honor In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Remain standing. We're about to go. We're about to go. Thank Pastor Ben for being here with us today. Amen. We had a week. I was in revival at this church in Western all week, and we had an awesome hallelujah time. Those three days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday night. God, God bless you. Are there any more announcements? Am I missing anything? You don't have slides. All hearts and minds are clear. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Come on, look at another neighbor.